Hey guys, Wadlock Studios here, and today I have a little treat for you. Um, so, um, in the past, uh, and if you're not familiar with my channel, uh, I've talked about doing hybrid workflows, and primarily it's in Unreal Engine. Um, in the past, in my work in progress section, in my Patreon, etc., I've gone over kind of the inverse of what Octopath Traveler is. So, Octopath Traveler uses uh, planes and three-dimensional elements um, from kind of this side and isometric point of view but it's it's basically two-dimensional characters or sprites um, you know in Unreal Engine this would be uh, sprite flip books uh, characters that are three-dimensional characters but they have basically a flip book or 2d sprite sheet that is animating for the character with a solid pixel style art uh, in 3D. Now, what I've done in Unreal is the opposite of that, where I've basically inverted that strategy um, and I use a tile map in Unreal to draw and basically create a, a floor, a ground plane, so to speak. And um, whenever I get to hills and such, then I'll bring the hills or bridges or other elements like that that are 3D into the world. And this is primary for like, you know, low end consoles, the Switch or um, mobile targets, Android, etc. cetera. Um, so, uh, you know, the question was, um, you know, could I potentially go over some interesting workflows in Godot that wouldn't just be like a traditional 2D or 3D uh, workflow, but a blend of the two or a hybrid of the two. So I figured I would show you guys how to accomplish the same thing in Godot. However, I, I want to note that like Godot's 2D editor and 2D scene, uh, as well as their tile set editor and tile mapping system, um, I've posted you know tutorial videos on this before. And over in the Wild Axe Studios Discord, by the way, check the description for that. Uh, consider joining it. We would love to have you. But um, there's tons of resources there and other devs that are working in Godot and Unreal. But um, essentially, I've, I've spoke on how to do this uh, to some degree in Unreal. And I, I currently have a, a project in Flight that is built out in this way. But... Um, I will say Godot's tile-based system rivals that of Unity. Like, it is far more fleshed out. It supports layering. It has automatic uh, collision generation. I mean, it there is a ton here for you, and it just happens so quickly and so fast uh, that it is um, almost ridiculous. So, yeah, anyway, um, just say that we're here, and uh, we want to grab something like this sign. You just grab it and you're like, uh, this looks like a good place for that to go. And we'll save it. And you'll notice when we jump back over here, boom, the sign is now there in this world um, alongside my other 3D objects. The 3D objects are simply drug out into the scene. And um, to explain how this works in Godot, uh, essentially, you have the concept of something called a sub viewport. Um, in Unreal, everything is an actor or it's a level. In Godot, you can instantiate scenes, which everything at a root level is a scene. So in this world, its parent is a node 3D. It is a scene. If we go to this node 2D and I click it, it opens the tile map floor. So this is the scene with the tile map in it that I'm drawing on top of it and it's being instantiated in 3D in this sub viewport here. And all I'm doing is taking this mesh, mesh instance 3D here, and you basically apply material to it. And in the albedo, you, uh, in the texture, it's a viewport texture. And then in the, in the viewport texture source, you just point to the sub viewport. That's pretty much it. The only other thing that has to happen is it needs to be local to scene in order for it to render the target out in this way. Um, but that's 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 pretty much it. You put it to update once, so every time you save it, it updates the viewport texture, it draws it out onto the uh, onto the the mesh, 
and the viewport scene has its own coordinate system so you just match this up with your tile set and uh, you're good to go for all of your 3d elements you just drag the props out so you just find something that you want and you just drag that bad boy out into your scene and you're good to go um, you would then create a 3d character you could either use a sprite uh, 2d on that 3d character or you could use a full-blown 3d character um, you would set up a follow camera system um, and you know you now have yourself a nice really quick way to iterate over a top-down isometric hybrid approach of a game that is um, you know essentially the inverse of Octopath Traveler if you built this up you know using the Godot has a tile 3d system uh, and use that in collaboration with this type of workflow then you could make headway really really quickly um, and again if you want to know how to do the 3d tile set uh, or the tiles 3d I think that's what the, uh, Godot calls it uh, there'll be resources in the Godot tutorial section in the Wildock Studios discord um, the other thing that I'll mention is for a project like this where you want to have cohesion um, you know, in one of my videos with MR3D Dev, it was asked, would I ever ship a game that didn't apply anti-aliasing by default? Whenever I'm going for an aesthetic that I'm trying to match three-dimensional elements, 3D objects to this 2D hybrid approach, the pixelated impact or the pixelated effect here on the art style uh, is intentional and you want you don't really want the edges of your 3D objects to not really go well with this pixelated look. So this is a case where on your material, you would want to pick the nearest filter. Um, so if we go to this mesh here, we go to the, um, the, the texture resource and we go to, uh, I think it's under sampling you would change it to nearest and the same applies for the materials that you have on your on your 3d meshes um, if you want to get that pixelated look that gives you that cohesion you'll want to do that and you'll also want to likely disable anti-aliasing um, just to kind of kick it over the edge a little bit and give those edges of your three-dimensional objects that that rough pixelated look that you see going on here um so yeah i hope this was helpful and um showcases another area where um you know this engine more than likely would shine stacked up against any other engine to perform a very similar task and um i do want to outline uh that in this scene we are using um screen space ambient occlusion we are using screen space uh, indirect lighting and SDFGI is on, which is the equivalent of Godot's um, sign distance field version of like Unreal's Lumen. Um, so you get all these bells and whistles um, and a project like this with these low poly assets and uh, simply a floor plane, um, you know, on the desktop, would run this without any problem whatsoever uh, across a very wide range of hardware. Um, now you could go to Voxel GI and switch over to mobile rendering uh, for mobile platforms, or you could, you know, if you if you're not interested in updating the directional light in real time for any reason, like say you don't want uh, a day night cycle, um, then of course you could you could bake this out. It will bake just fine um, and then you could run this in compatibility all the way down in OpenGL so um, yeah anyway until next time guys remember to leave a like and subscribe put your comments down below in the comment section your feedback to me and your questions about these kinds of things is what gives me inspiration to cut videos like this um, yeah until next time happy developing and toodles